I'm Peter Block in Washington, D.C. at ACC 2017, and with me is Paul Ritker. Paul has been interested in lipids and since he was two years old. Uh, and uh, Paul, now we're dealing with two trials, Aspire 1 and Aspire 2, and also the lipid lowering portion for this new drug. So first off, tell me what the drug is, because it's an intriguing drug, and then about the Aspire trials and where we go from here and what we've learned. Well, thanks, Peter. It's always nice to be here with you. So bocuzumab is a humanized PCSK9 inhibitor. That's really important to understand. It's different than a fully human therapeutic monoclonal, which is what evolocumab and alaracumab are. The drugs are on the market. So this humanized monoclonal antibody has a little bit of mouse left in it, and what we learned in the Spire lipid-lowering studies is that had an impact. Patients developed anti-drug antibodies against that mouse piece, and that's why this drug is not going to come to patient use, uh, because it's a little bit of a hassle to deal with, uh, and some patients got an attenuation of the LDL reduction. Okay, but since even though that, that had occurred, right. Spire 1 and Spire 2 are amazingly important trials. Well, this is what's so interesting to us. Despite the antibody production, and despite the fact that the trials stopped early because they stopped development, in Spire 2, which was our high risk, LDLs had to be above 100 despite being a high dose statin therapy, we saw a 21% statistically significant reduction in a very hard outcome. Non-fatal MI, non-fatal stroke, unstable angina requiring urgent revascularization or cardiovascular death. That's terrific news for our patients because we now have validation of the LDL hypothesis. In fact, when we take Spire 1, which is a lower LDL trial, combine it with Spire 2, and then stratify by the magnitude of LDL reduction, we've got a 25% reduction in those who have a greater than median LDL reduction and then lesser for the ones who did not. And that tells us lower is better, that's what we know. And then we also stratified by how long were you treated. And because the trial stopped early, our average treatment's only about a year. But if you were treated longer than that, much greater benefit. So clinically, the bottom line is, I think it means LDL that's lower for longer is what we're after here. You know, the long-term benefit is important, and I agree with you on that one. The th thing that strikes me about Spire 1 Spire 2 is the fact that you also got early reduction as well. I mean, perhaps not as great as you would have loved, but nonetheless, it was there. Our trial was only, it was stopped at an average of 10 months, and we're already seeing benefit. Now, the first six months, we don't see much, but it starts to accumulate. If you put that in context of what the Fourier folks show, where they do not have the antibody problem, uh, they have very similar results, around a 20% risk reduction for the hard endpoint, 15% for their primary endpoint. I think walking out of this meeting, we can say, look, your first step is get them on a high-dose statin, because it's really still all about LDL reduction and then for our very high risk patients. You and I have them in clinic. Multiple MIs, MIs and strokes, multiple recurrent angioplasties. We all have patients that are progressing their disease. That's who I would treat. Well, I don't think anyone can say it any better than that. The LDL hypothesis is clearly supported by this exciting trial and it's too bad it's not gonna work, but we have important information from it. Thanks, Paul.